the two biggest Timcast IRL shows on YouTube were deleted, both today. This has to stop. It has to. I'm from the future. Subscribe to me if you want to live. Tim Pool had two of his biggest videos from two years ago deleted. And YouTube won't even say what happened. They won't even say what rule he broke. Then posted on X, Luke Rudkowski, who I've never watched. I don't know any of his stuff, but he said that he had something deleted that was 12 years old from 2012. Retroactive enforcement. And then I had a video deleted at 5.30 a.m. It's so frustrating walking on eggshells over here on YouTube. And people say... Go to Rumble, go to Rumble, go to Rumble. I have been on Rumble the whole time. I had Rumble sorted out before YouTube. I had a cloned channel with every YouTube video also playing on the cloned Rumble channel. And I was getting no views and no money. Okay? I, I appreciate Rumble for being a free speech platform but it is a free speech platform without a real algorithm. So people who have built gigantic followings other places brought those, those gigantic followings to Rumble and they had a good home there. And I appreciate it and I'm glad for them. But those big creators who are already loaded, already rich, already established, telling people over on YouTube, hey, just come to Rumble, YouTube is being shitty. Like, thank you, sir. Thank you. But you didn't grind your way in alt tech to a big following. You didn't. You built it out in main tech and then brought chunks over to alt tech and started plugging and building that. And that's fine and it's respectable, but it's so damn frustrating as a small creator trying to grow that you're dealing with both sides of this. You're dealing with the bullshit from the YouTube side, and then you're dealing with the free speech purists in alt tech as spectators saying, well, this is your fault for being over there. You should just be over here. We are over there. I have my cloned Freedom to Think channel, which I stopped posting to because nobody watched those videos. I'm just being honest. And then I found that live streaming on Rumble was what I needed to do. So I have my gaming channel and I have my ThoughtCast news channel live streams exclusively on Rumble. That's where they are. But the reality is I have taken a massive pay cut in production to move to Rumble because on YouTube, there are ads paid. You have ad revenue. AdSense that pays you for views, for watch time, etc. On Rumble, it's not like that. It's just not set up the same. So the great thing is over on Rumble, they have the instantly day one monetized. So people can donate. They can subscribe to your channel. You have no minimum requirement to get started. It's amazing. And that has made it. So I have been able to make some money over on Rumble. But the culture on Rumble is still very much like watching a news station. Have you ever tipped Tucker Carlson or Hannity? No, of course not. You just watch it, you observe it, and you move on. The live streaming culture of like Twitch is way more catering to the individual creator and understanding the difficulty and the expense that individual creators deal with. And then people, they'll, they'll, They'll partake in your content. They'll subscribe as channel members. They'll tip the shows. That's more the culture of those live streaming platforms. Whereas with Rumble and YouTube, that significantly lagged behind because people are used to getting the content for free and the creators being paid by the ad revenue. That's just reality. Ad revenue and sponsorships. But if you don't have ad revenue and you don't have sponsorships, then you're just making content pro bono 
with whatever people's tips and memberships come through. So I'm not blaming viewers. I'm choosing to do this and I have a message and I have a mission that I'm trying to get out there. I'm just saying that the demonization of small creators that are busting their ass in alt tech for basically nothing who have to deal with the bullshit of big tech in order to be able to feed their family, etc. It's a crappy situation to be in. That's all I'm saying. And Tim cast got attacked and he has a much, much bigger platform than me, but he explains perfectly the problems that he's running into. I'm going to kind of echo what he says, but from the side of a much, much smaller creator. So you can see both sides of it. The issues that a big person over on main tech has with the censorship and these horrible policies. And then somebody who's very, very small, but dealing with the same world. All right. So first clip, here's what happened. They took down our two biggest episodes at the same time. One, they claimed we promoted QAnon. That is, I, I say defamation. I've never promoted QAnon. I mock people who are promoting QAnon. We, when people on the show ever mention anything about it, we say that's silly nonsense. They claim that we had some kind of uh, uh, vaccine medical misinformation. So you didn't get a strike on that one, but it's OK. Here's what this means. I'm on the phone with Google immediately after this happened. I get an email and they're like, we just want to let you know we took these episodes down. And I said, three years after these episodes aired, you are now claiming a policy violation. And they're like, well, it was always against the rules. And I said, OK, here's what we're going to do. I will instruct my social media guy right now to delete every single video off the Timcast IRL channel. We will air the episodes and a week later, delete them from the platform. We will put the clips up and a week later, delete them from the platform, because that is the only thing we can do based on retroactive policy enforcement. Four months ago, I posted that I was switching things around with the channel. I was moving some projects off into their own silos. So I moved the Thoughtcast to a channel over on Rumble exclusively, and I moved the gaming streams over to a channel on Rumble exclusively. And at that time, I also deleted a hundred of my lowest performing videos just so the algorithm wasn't hurt by bad content. I don't know if it helped at all, but it's just what I did. Timcast is losing three-year-old episodes. This Luke Ridkowski guy losing an episode from 12 years ago. And around the same time, I get a notice that I'm having a video removed. So I culled through my stuff again and I deleted close to another hundred videos. So I'm just keeping the good stuff on here. But the reality is the very first video I posted on YouTube, the very first one got removed for medical misinformation. And it wasn't, it just absolutely wasn't misinformation but it was during the pandemic time when the liars were in charge of everything and big tech capitulated to them this is so frustrating dude so the only thing i could say the only thing i could say honestly is please subscribe to my rumble channels because if at any point i get whacked I will go to Rumble and post there and on Twitter X. That's where I'm going to be. So if you follow me in those two spots, Twitter and Rumble, that's like the safe places. I have a Discord, so you can come chat in the Discord server. But as far as free speech goes, that's as close as we got. But it's not bringing in Buku Bucks, man. It's not sustainable for a small creator. And now we're going to listen to Tim explain the Rumble angle because... This is from a bigger, already established creator perspective. And I want you guys to hear this. A lot of people have said, Tim, go to Rumble. Tim, go to Rumble. Well, you know, we're on Rumble. And then people ask us why the live show isn't on Rumble. The live show is the biggest driver of memberships to TimCast.com, which is the only way we're able to do all of this. If we downsized and became like a uh, digital over the air show where we just Skype people in and stuff like that. Sure, that shaves off a ton of money from our budget and we, we, we could make things a lot cheaper. But I think one of the things that makes the conversations on the show work better, and I've talked to a lot of people in the industry about it and everyone agrees, is in-person conversations in real life. 
Well, I don't want to do that. That means right now, based on how much it costs to run this show, drivers, staff, hotels, etc., the amount of members we have is uh, maintaining. We the, the, the amount of memberships we have is at a, at a decent amount where we make a little bit more every month than we spend on the show, which gives us the ability to invest in other projects. My concern when I talk to all these other big companies and they're like, we want Timcast IRL live here, here or here or otherwise, is that the clips don't drive a lot of memberships. The live show does because once we wrap the live show, we say, hey, the show continues at Timcast.com, become a member to watch the members only uncensored. With that, we are maintaining a slight growth. We have a, we have a slight uptick a little bit in how many members we have, but we don't grow a, a whole lot. It's, it's, it's very slow and steady. And this means, based on the model we have, the show can continue. If we were to stop doing live on YouTube the way we are, divide it up to other platforms, we run the risk of deranking. We run the risk of losing a large portion of what funds the show, driving new members, and then we become a sinking ship. We would have to start firing staff, cutting corners, reducing investment in projects. Possible. We could do that. I'd prefer not to. So the conversations we've had with other big networks has been, can you cover the costs of how much we make through YouTube and ad revenue so that if we make this move and we lose money, we stay afloat for at least a certain amount of time? And typically the answers have been, I don't know, maybe. I don't know if we want to do that. And I say, okay, well then we're going to keep doing what we're doing on YouTube because the live show generates the memberships that make the show work. It's that simple. I've been very vocal and clear in the fact that I am an America first Trump supporter. I do not support foreign wars. I am incredibly firmly against the weird gender ideology agenda against our children, which I think is a Marxist revolution in disguise. Uh, I am against all foreign aid, basically, definitely all foreign aid given in wars, proxy wars that we seem to be funding both sides of. And I'm specifically against child sex trafficking, which is rampant as a gigantic issue. I donated a large bit of time in creating content around and promoting the Sound of Freedom movie, and I have been sprinkling content, bringing awareness to that issue in through my channel for quite some time. I will say this, if they want to look under a microscope at every single one of my old videos for the entire time that I've been here on YouTube, I'm sure they could trump up some stupid charge and ax me from the platform at any moment. That's just the reality. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And for everyone who supports it, everyone who's a channel member, anyone who subscribes to my Patreon, buy me a coffee or my Rumble channels. I really appreciate it. I'm going to keep plugging you guys, the Free Thinkers Rebellion, because you support it. You help me. And I know between weird violations, weird demonetization tactics and strategies, as a more conservative truther type person on the platform, it's an absolute struggle. It's, it's brutal, dude. I mean, you just work and work and work and work. And you're like, I just got to work hard enough for long enough that eventually I get lucky. And I really thought I got lucky with a sponsorship opportunity from a, a big company for editing software, which you guys know, I do tons of editing and I got a very, you know, professional <laughs> contact and I went back and forth. And then I realized this, this is a scam. I wanted so much for that to be my break and it, it was a scam like, okay. So I'm just going to keep working and hopefully I get lucky before I get kicked off. But if I do, I'll be on Twitter. I'll be on rumble. I'll never stop. I'll never shut up. But I'm beating a lot of ramen. So just wanted to let you know. From the small perspective, it's the same exact thing, except instead of firing people, it's just one person who has a shrinking, rapidly shrinking income and just has to deal with it somehow. I'm a big fan of Rumble.
Uh, I'm friends with Chris Pavlovsky. He's a great dude. We use Rumble infrastructure for TimCast.com. We use Parallel Economy for our memberships. We are absolutely utilizing their infrastructure and they make money from it. We make money from it because we want to build the Parallel Economy. But there is a reality. When Rumble launched and we split our clips from YouTube to Rumble, we lost probably 40% of the revenue we got from YouTube. Because as much as Rumble is great and we want Rumble to exist and we want to be on Rumble, we don't make ad revenue off those videos. So when a video normally got 80 to 100,000 on YouTube, we would make a couple hundred bucks. Now the video on YouTube gets 50, 60,000 and on Rumble gets 30. That means we lost all of that ad revenue. So we have to maintain memberships. We can't just shut down and switch to Rumble because then we'd have to start laying people off and, 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 and shrinking the ship. Don't want to do that. I don't have anyone to fire, but I do have mouths to feed. So I have to think about that in the decisions that I make around my content and where I put my content. I got to get back to work. Thanks, guys. See ya.